Oh, my dear sister-in-law, such a shame about the infertility. Guess the dream of a bouncing baby for William just went up in smoke, huh? Speaking of smoke, are you finished fumigating the house yet? Can't wait to get back in there and breathe easy again. I'm on my way back as we speak. The movers are already here to take everything. Movers, huh? Sounds expensive. Hope William's new job can cover it. Speaking of which, have you found your new place yet? Wouldn't want you two lovebirds to be homeless on the street. Georgina, is this really necessary? We both know things haven't been working out and I'm leaving. There's no point in these barbs. Barbs? I'm just making conversation, Diane. Besides, you can't blame me for wanting a little peace and quiet around here. Your constant presence has been... Well, let's just say it hasn't been a joyride. So you used line to say those hurtful things to me? Couldn't even pick up the phone and have a decent conversation like an adult? Line was convenient. <laughs> Besides, I was busy. Busy celebrating the fact that you're finally out of here. Free up the house. Frees up William's paycheck for some real fun. You know, the kind you can't get with a nag like you around. I see. So it was all about convenience and fun for you, huh? Not about what was best for the family? Family? Don't be ridiculous. You haven't exactly been Miss Congeniality over the last few years. Always moping around with that long face. Honestly, you should be thanking me for giving you a little push out the door. Thank you? Thank you for making me feel unwelcome in my own home? Thank you for turning my husband against me? You know what, Georgina? The infertility issue? Turns out it's me, not William. But despite that, I've kept this house running, taking care of you and your mother, all while William changed jobs five times. And this is the thank you I get? Come on. I asked you to take care of things for three years. During these three years, I haven't had a child with William. When I checked with the hospital, the doctor's words echoed in my ears. It was my body that wouldn't cooperate. However, haven't I always taken care of my husband's family, including you, Georgina? I cooked, cleaned, and even helped manage your mother's finances? Why do I have to apologize for something beyond my control? Diane, that sounds ridiculous. Don't think you're the only one who's worried about this family. Don't think you're significant just because you do some household chores. Because my mother and I were reluctant to accept you. We had our reservations, but you were all we had. I don't have any other choice in the matter. Just do some household chores? Both your mom and you never left a finger to do any housework. You leave everything for me to handle, treating this house like a personal hotel. And William, he's been struggling to find stable work. He has changed jobs five times in three years, each time with the promise of something better, but ending up with even less security. And I've had to endure it all of it. The constant stress, the financial strain. No, no, on the contrary. My brother is very admirable. What? Admirable? What do you mean? Because he's changed jobs five times in three years and can still find another job. It shows his adaptability, his resilience. If it were normal, he would have been unemployed for a long time. But William, he's a fighter. That's very wonderful, wouldn't you agree? I don't understand what you are excited about. Also, from the third time onwards, those weren't full-time positions, Georgina. He was no longer hired as an official employee, only as a part-time worker or a freeder. Not to mention, many places don't hire part-time employees consistently. It's true that he can be called unemployed, right? That means there is no place that hires him as a stable employee anymore. No, no, my brother's not unemployed. This house? The big car? It wasn't easy for my older brother who worked hard and borrowed money from the bank to buy them. But that's not something you could just do with a normal part-time job, seriously. This family is so weird. Your priorities are completely skewed. What do you mean by that? No, nothing. It doesn't matter anymore. Anyway, my dear sister-in-law seems so worried about having us welcomed her. Let's face it, the welcome wasn't exactly warm and fuzzy, was it? And now that you're finally leaving, shouldn't we throw you a little goodbye party? Just kidding, of course. No, there's no need for any kind of farewell. My mother-in-law and her friends already cleared out, and the rest of the house is like a tomb. William and I will be strangers, living under the same roof for one final night. 
Even if we wanted a goodbye, there wouldn't be anyone left to hear it. <laughs> That's a real picture of marital bliss, isn't it? No one to see you off. Just packing your bags in the cold silence of this house. A happy ending indeed. What are you even talking about, Georgina? Nothing important, just making conversation, you know. Speaking of goodbyes, when are you planning on filing for divorce? It's too late to do anything today. I'll file the application first thing tomorrow. This marriage, it's finally over. That's the spirit. It's high time, wouldn't you say? Just don't come crying to me tomorrow, begging for another chance. We've all had enough drama, haven't we? Don't worry, there won't be any tears or begging. That's a good girl. Looks like you've finally grown a backbone. But let me tell you something, Diane. You may be strong now, but you're also facing this all alone. No husband, no family, just you and your empty boxes. The end of a relationship is a necessary evil sometimes. And believe it or not, Georgina, I can pack my things and get myself out of this house without needing anyone's help. So what's next for you, huh? Divorced and childless? What kind of future is that for a woman? You'll never find another husband, that's for sure. Doomed to spend the rest of your day as a lonely old spinster. It's pathetic, really. When I found out I couldn't have children, it hit me like a ton of bricks. The dream of a family with William is shattered. But you know what hurt even more? The fact that my own family, the people who were supposed to be there for me, turned their backs on me and blamed me for everything. Well, of course they did. We all thought you were healthy. We thought that you can give William the children he deserves. Turns out that was all a lie. You deceived my brother, Diana. You tricked him into marrying you under false pretenses. I am a woman. Don't talk like that. A woman can be more than just a baby machine. Don't you see the years I've poured into this family? Well, are you turning your real face, huh? Don't take out your anger on me like that, okay? Till now, you've always had a pensive expression on your face. That face has really made me feel disgusted. I'm glad not to have to see that face anymore. Today, we should have a celebration. A toast to finally being rid of you. I don't care about your celebrations or your toasts. I will never come back to this house when I get married again. Just the thought that I would have the happiest family in my life, but it turned out to be the biggest disappointment. Wait, wait just a little bit. Stop blaming others. If the bride still fulfills the important function of a woman, we will happily accept her and continue to live together, right? But you can't do that. You're a broken toy, Diane. You're useless to us now. The important function of a woman? Basically, this family is already too stressful for me to handle, even if my body could still give birth. I'm sure I'll leave this house sooner or later. Also, I always wanted to say this to your family. That's bad, huh? This is the last time. So I'll sit and listen to you just to get it over with, but what do you want to say? For the past three years, I've been working like a slave in this house. The husband can't hold a stable job. There's almost no income. Your mother uses every penny of her savings only to show off to her friends with their fancy vacations and expensive clothes. Your sister is selfish and always causes chaos in the house. And yet I've tried my best for this family. I cooked, I cleaned, I even managed your mother's finances. Well, you're just congratulating yourself again. Isn't it obvious that women have to do all the housework to support their husbands, don't they? Or do you want to hear some words like they're doing a great job? That's not how the world works, honey. Now everything is meaningless. Just leaving is enough. I don't need your approval or your empty praise. Hey, don't treat us like we're the ones who are wrong. Maybe the person who's wrong is you. Don't come to my house anymore. What a shameful woman. You're a burden and disappointment. Stay away from us. Never come back. Don't worry. I won't do anything. It's better for me anyway. Goodbye, Georgina. And good luck finding someone else to clean up after you. Who cares about your goodbye? Just get out already. Sister-in-law, hurry and listen to the phone. Sister-in-law, pick up the phone now. Huh? What's wrong? Stop being annoying like that. How dare you sell our house and car without saying anything? Just because you were kicked out of the house, you're doing too much up there. Houses and cars are all taken away. You must be responsible for that, stealing like a common criminal. Well, I don't know anything about selling a house and car, but it must be because of that whole mess, right? Wouldn't you agree? 
Don't pretend like that. That's unbelievable. You wouldn't dare. Return the house and car immediately, or I'll call the police, do you understand? <laughs> anyway, how could I sell someone else's stuff? I'm just selling my own things. Calm down, Georgina. What do you mean, own your things? The house is in William's name. The car is registered to my mother. Don't try and play dumb with me. In other words, it's not what you think. Our property wasn't sold illegally, but rather it originally belonged to your sweet, naive sister-in-law. <laughs> Surprised, aren't you? The car and home are yours now. Ugh, what nonsense are you talking about? There's no way. Why do you think that's been possible? Because I never worked a real job, according to you? Because I took care of your entire household while you sat around like a king? Because you didn't have a job in the traditional sense. How could someone who doesn't work afford to buy a house or a car? So stop this ridiculous act. Who said I don't have a job? I may not have fit into your narrow definition of work, but I worked nonetheless. You had a job? Didn't you just do housework? You couldn't even give birth to a baby anymore, so what good are you? That's right. Though I cannot give birth, that doesn't define my worth. And the belief that having children is women's work is definitely wrong. We are all people, so you should understand, right? How would you feel if someone said something similar about your own capabilities, huh? I'm completely different. Don't be jealous because you can't do the same thing, sister-in-law. Oh, I'm sorry, my ex-sister-in-law. I don't want to be called your sister-in-law anymore, Georgina. And for your information, I have worked not only as a housewife, but also as a full-fledged legal secretary at a prestigious firm. At night... After everyone got to bed, slaving away so you could all live comfortably. Everyone went to bed. Don't talk nonsense because my brother works a super freighter. He's out at sea for months at a time making a ton of money. Super freighter? So what is the difference with a normal freighter? Don't tell me you actually believe that nonsense, Georgina. William hasn't held a stable job for years. Listen, super freighters are the ones who can make huge amounts of money, more than normal little ones. How can a praetor earn more reasonable money? Huh? Praetor? You mean a freighter, right, Georgina? Super freighter? Sounds like something out of a cartoon. My brother is definitely admirable. Oh, his salary is also very high. $10,000 per hour. $10,000 per hour? Don't make me laugh, Georgina. <laughs> That's more than most CEOs make in a year. Joke. Anyway, my brother was a superb fighter. A financial whiz, I mean. And he supports our family all the time. Always bringing home the big bucks. Unfortunately, the only fighting William seems to do is with keeping a job. His salary is only $30 per hour, and that's when he actually shows up for work. Huh? $30 an hour? There must be some kind of mistake. He must be some kind of super minimum wage earner or something. In addition to his questionable work ethic, William often made mistakes. So his working hours were reduced and his monthly salary was only around $700. It is much lower than the salary of a newly graduated college student. Unfortunately, he isn't a super freezer showering us with riches like you said. No, no way. Stop lying. He earned at least at least, he earned at least $700 per month. That's barely enough to cover rent. My family budget might definitely have a deficit. Yes, your family is in serious financial trouble, Georgina. A truth you seem to be conveniently ignoring. Most of this family's living expenses were paid by me, not your super freighter brother. Huh? So a person who only did housework and couldn't earn money? How did you pay it? Don't lie to me anymore. Let me tell you about the Pandora Room, Georgina. A place where I poured out my frustrations and anxieties every night after you all went to sleep. Each keystroke is a rebellion against the stifling expectations of this family. I wrote dramatic tales of a dysfunctional household, a manipulative mother-in-law, and a husband who couldn't hold a job. Oh, so you're a blogger. It's not that easy to make money writing stories online. And we were the topic, right? Sounds like you were airing out our dirty laundry for the whole world to see. Let's just say the stories resonated with a lot of people, Georgina. Thousands followed the trials and tribulations of the unnamed family. And of course, none of it was flattering. Did you... Did you write that my sister-in-law is beautiful? There must have been some positive, right? 
Don't flatter yourself, Georgina. The focus was on the dysfunction, the constant financial strain, the lies you all told yourselves. And guess what? People loved it. Huh? The more I wrote, the more popular the blog became. And with that popularity came sponsorships, advertising deals, a steady steam of income, an income that far surpassed anything William could ever dream of bringing home. I can't understand. Why could my brother marry this weird person? Weird? Oh, really? Without me, Georgina, this family would have been living in a cardboard box months ago. Your mother's extravagant spending habits would have finally caught up to you. Bankruptcy, Georgina, that's where you were headed. Bankruptcy? What are you talking about? You're just a high school student, so maybe you haven't noticed. But your family's finances are a house of cards. That house, that car, all bought with the money I made from my blog. The groceries you ate, the electricity you used, most of it came from my pocket. Don't say that, it sounds ridiculous. But a house was sold and a car was taken away. Is that true? Why are you saying, is it true? Yes, it is true. Your mother has a credit card bill due next month that she can't possibly pay. William only brought home around $600 this month. And besides... Oh, that's right. I have to pay the university entrance fee next month. This is all a disaster. I can't believe it's come to this. Oh, that's right, little girl. Whenever I was still a member of that family, I would take responsibility for paying you. Then you kicked me out of the house and called me a barren woman, a useless appendage. Now, I'm not a member of that goddamn family anymore, so I don't have to pay anymore, right? That can't be true. I studied hard to get into the university. I dreamt of going to college, getting a good job, making something of myself. If I can't get in, I'll have to work with just a high school diploma. That can't happen to me. I still want to be a college student. Maybe you can't. Even if you start working now, you won't be able to accumulate that amount of money in such a short time. You'll have to throw away your dreams of higher education and join the workforce right after graduating from high school. Imagine that, Georgina, working a dead-end job just like your brother. I don't want that. Oh, sister-in-law, we used to be family for crying out loud. I'm not asking you to just give me the money, just slap me some. Alone, that's it. I'll make sure to pay you back every single penny. If those words are trustworthy, I will give anyone a chance, regardless of whether they're family or not. Honesty and integrity are paramount. Wouldn't you agree? Really? Please believe me. I'll definitely pay you back. I swear on everything I hold dear. Is that okay with you? Can you answer my question honestly, Georgina? Okay, what's that? You said you would return the money. So when and how? Be specific, Georgina. Huh? When will I return it and how? When will you return it and how? Don't tell me fairy tales about pocket money. Your family is drowning in debt, remember? Oh, from the pocket money I received from my parents. However, your family struggles financially. How can you afford it? Isn't this just another empty promise, another lie you've learned so well from your brother? Even though you said that, don't you understand? University education is the only way I can escape this dead-end life, this circle of poverty your family's trapped me in. Do you know how much university tuition costs, Georgina? Besides the entrance fee, there are also housing costs, meal plans, books, and countless other expenses. Do you get it? What about that money? To pay off the tuition, I'll have to work part-time until graduation, every single night if I have to. University tuition is about $100,000 per year, right? The tuition for four years is about $500,000, right? If it's only about that amount, that could be managed with effort. I'm young and strong. I could handle it. Well, according to my research, Georgina, the university you want to attend is a prestigious private institution. They have a reputation for excellence, not affordability. I don't want to lend you any money. And quite frankly, your plan sounds like nothing more than a naive fantasy. Huh? I already said I'd pay you back. So I put my last hope in you. Why? Because you're the only one who understands. Don't you remember all those times you complained about my family's spending habits? We were on the same team once, weren't we? I said I'd give it back properly. Every single cent. With interest. Listen, Georgina, university admission fees are separate from tuition costs. Your university admission fee is $300,000, and the annual tuition fee is a staggering $500,000. The total cost until graduation is a whopping $6,300,000. Oh, don't tell me you don't even know your own admission and tuition fees. Didn't you say you would definitely pay it back? Besides what we just discussed, there will be costs for textbooks, living expenses, transportation, 
and who knows what else. Isn't that all the money that you can earn from a part-time job, flipping burgers or stocking shelves? How can I lend you money when your plan hinges on such a flimsy foundation? If you get it, go and find a company that hires high school graduates with zero experience and a mountain of debt. Why? Why is it so expensive? My wonderful university life gone just like that. Damn it, sister-in-law. I'll make enough money to pay for my university tuition. Hey, let's go back home. Even though this house is no longer ours, maybe there's something we can figure out together. Yeah, right. No way. What should I do now? I can't come back to that house, not with everything I've revealed. My family is about to be in debt, and seeing their struggles would just make me feel even worse. I want to say thank you for divorcing me, Georgina. In a twisted way, it forced me to become independent and find my own way. Damn it. If I knew this was going to happen, I wouldn't have kicked you out. It's too late to regret now, Georgina. Work and learn how to cope with the life on your own. Maybe after 10 years, weathering the storms life throws at you, you will become a better person. It's unlikely, but there's still a chance. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a plane to catch. There's a new city waiting for me, one filled with opportunity and freedom from the likes of you and your family. Goodbye, Georgina. After that, Georgina's family lost their house, lost their car, and had no money to pay for any hotel. Shame hung heavy in the air as they shuffled out of their once comfortable home, the weight of their empty pockets mirroring the emptiness in their heart. Looks like that family has been begging in the park for a while. One day, Georgina approached a well-dressed woman, but her pleas for help were met with a disdainful glare. We work for our money, young woman. The woman sniffed, clutching her purse tighter. Georgina looked for a part-time job after graduating from high school, her resume filled with nothing but empty promises. She can't recruit anywhere to do their insolent and disrespectful attitude. On the other hand, I became a famous blogger, thanks to that family my scathing social commentary resonating with millions. I built a loyal following, my online persona, a stark contrast to the quiet housewife I once was. After all, I will prioritize myself and enjoy my life on my own terms. No longer would I be defined by a family that never valued me. The future stretched before me, brimming with possibility, and I embraced it with open arms.